Hey, I'm Friendly Baron and welcome to my current world record and tutorial for the Under the Bridges speedrun in GTA 5, also known as the Close Shave category. In this video, I'll be reviewing the run in a way that should be entertaining, but also informational enough that you could begin doing the speedrun yourself if you wish. First of all, I am starting the speedrun footage just after finishing the two prologue missions in single player. We'll review how to do those at the end of the video. The first thing to do is to call a taxi to use the teleport, and I get very lucky with one turning into me anyways. They actually spawn pretty often here. We set a waypoint and fast travel to the stunt plane trials at the Sandy Shores airfield. Using this location lets us instantly get into a plane, along with other benefits like respawning and moving around the map quickly that you'll see later. We only have one trial available right now, so we select it and begin the takeoff. I take off directly in front of me to head to the first bridge we want to fly under, but also that the taxi I arrived in turns invisible and if I go any farther left, I will crash into it and explode. In GTA 5, there is a challenge to go under 50 specific bridges in any air vehicle, similar to the 50 stunt jumps that can be done. As well, we'll be doing the 15 knife flights in this run, where you fly between two buildings at a 90 degree angle. Doing all the knife flights and under the bridges gives you the achievement or trophy if on PS4 called a close shave, hence the official name of this speedrun. Approaching bridge 1 and it's rather easy, just fly right under. Most of the bridges up north here aren't too hard yet, but there are some tough ones later. If you're new to GTA speedrunning, the main speedruns go through the entire single player campaign, which takes about 6.5 hours. This run is similar to the stunt jump speedrun, where it is a collectible style speedrun and much shorter, as a kind of fun side category, but also a good introduction to new runners. We approach this interchange and knock off two more bridges in a row, then take a quick left turn to avoid the giant mountain quickly approaching and head to the next bridge. This bridge is the Not a Bridge Bridge. It's technically just a land arch, but bridgy enough. Embarrassingly, it's also my only fail during this run. Instead of even a funny explosion or something, I just barely tap the top with my wing which invalidates the completion, and I have to do a go around which loses me 10 seconds. I'm hoping this video will also serve as an introduction to GTA 5 speedrunning. I'm sure most of you would just watch this for entertainment and out of curiosity, which is perfectly fine. Most people don't speedrun anyways. A few people may use it for help finding all of the bridges and close shaves, but hopefully a few of you are inspired to try out the speedrun. Even if you are on Xbox or PlayStation, this run is completely doable for you, and while the leaderboard shows all consoles, you can just compare against the people on your console and try to be the best on your platform. No down patching or mods are required for this run, and I'll add extra info about what you need to do if you want to try out this speedrun in the description. This is a new category at the time of my uploading this video, with only two submissions, so there's plenty of room for improvements in this category, but the routing is slow enough right now to warrant this video. Bridge number 5 is simply under the silver pass while over the freeway, and while recording this I relish how easy these first few bridges are compared to the final ones. Not every bridge in the game is counted for the speedrun. Rockstar just kinda picked 50 of them and called it there, though there are plenty elsewhere on the map that we don't have to go under for this collection. Most notably, some of the bridges on the highway next to Vinewood and the Casino Racetrack aren't counted as under the bridge bridges. Bridge number 6 was straightforward as well. I chose to go under the right side for two reasons. It's slightly wider giving me more room to go around traffic, and also gives an easier left turn to go to number 7, otherwise I'd probably hit the power line tower if I had been on the left side. I'm sure you've noticed by now, but this video is taken from my livestream, hence the slightly worse quality, and was recorded on my old computer. Any future Twitch footage will be in higher quality, but this is actually over a month old and I'm only getting around to recording this commentary now. Bridge number 7 is the first slightly difficult bridge. You have to slightly bank the plane in order to get enough clearance on either side of the wings. You can go under any part of the bridge for style points, but I go over the road because it's safest. Bridge 8 is right after and simple enough, then a bank left to head to bridge number 9. The riding for the speedrun comes into play here, as I will crash the plane immediately after. Since we are in the stunt trial, after failing we can immediately return to the starting point and do more bridges in that area. As well, the ability to respawn after a fail means you are still in a plane, instead of a hospital and needing to go grab a fresh plane completely. I use this pole to knock a wing off and destroy the plane, as it gives just enough time for the under the bridge complete screen to come up. Hitting anything sooner would fail the bridge, even if you were mostly past it. This puts us right back at the airport where we started, and will now turn right and take off again headed to a different area of the map. As far as playing skills, the main thing to do is just be smooth with the controls. I play on a controller as you can see in the bottom left, but there's no reason keyboard players couldn't also do this. Flight in GTA does not have any major tricks like driving does, besides a speed boost when above 900 feet. We only use that for a moment later during the run. Thank you for the offer. 
On the screen, I'll take a moment to mention the splits. I have a split marker and name for each bridge for myself, and use an auto splitter that I coded with help from the community that automatically detects when I've crossed under a bridge based off the game's memory values. That's not necessary to do speedruns, but it is very convenient for me to try and get super accurate timings. I've only done about 10 runs of this category so far, but I plan to try and shave off travel time more soon with a few future runs. Bridges 10 and 11 were easy as well. The main thing is to just fly directly to and between them to shave off time. And the same with number 12, as I'm already headed directly at it. After hitting bridge 12, we'll do a sharp right turn and head up into the mountains. Well, not hit bridge 12, you know what I mean. The routing for this category was originally done by Askerbini, that I improved it a fair bit with help from Rillo and my other Twitch viewers the first day I streamed it. It was thought to be a dumb idea for a long time since we figured we'd be stealing a jet from a military base and only having basically one shot to do all the bridges without crashing. Speaking of crashing, Bridge 13 is a great spot for it. We remain low over the mountain, dip down, then pull up right away, and it's tough to do at high speed. Right after, I'll get into first person and look at the altimeter. I mentioned the 900 feet speed barrier earlier, and it comes into play here. You can see this dial right above the joystick and it's at around 950 feet right now. In real life, planes go faster when at a higher altitude due to less air resistance, but it scales. In GTA, they simplify that that'd be a hard limit at 900 feet for around a 20% speed increase. Since we were already high in the mountains, we'd stay up there for as long as possible before we need to drop down for the next bridge. These two in a row can be tough. You can hit the water and continue flying, but it will fail the bridge. Stay low over the trees and hope you don't get a tree to pop in late on you. That killed one of my runs once. After bridge 16, I do a banked corner to turn around and get low for 17, then crash yet again to teleport back to the runway. This pathing that uses the stunt trials made the category possible, since when doing the run you can now crash but get going again pretty quick. I do plan on getting a mod to make my vehicle invincible and trying some practice runs with a jet plane to see if it's faster from Fort Sancudo now that I have practice, even though you can't warp around the map as easily. Now we'll do the actual plane trial, kind of. By completing the checkpoints, it unlocks another trial which we can use to head into the downtown area of the city. However, we only need a bronze time instead of gold or silver to unlock the next challenge, so we'll take a few detours to grab more bridges and skip some checkpoints that give us a penalty on trial time, but make us faster in real time by not having to fly longer to get them. Normal checkpoints take one second off the time, blue or green stunt checkpoints that make you be upside down or on your side take four seconds off the trial time, and missing a checkpoint adds five seconds. To be clear, this doesn't affect the speedrun time, but rather the time of the trial itself so we can actually complete it. As you can see, it's not particularly difficult since this is only the level 1 trial. If you like this style of collectible speedruns, there's also the All Letters% percent category, where you collect all 50 murder mystery notes around the map and then complete the mission that spawns after that. It's a bit more speedrun style, as you're in a helicopter half the time and teleport around to memorize locations in a taxi half the time. The checkpoints conveniently lead us under this bridge. A fun fact is that boat below me is a scripted spawn every time. We'll then turn left over the terrain to grab another bridge, then loop back and return onto the path of the checkpoints, nearly. We'll skip our first checkpoint over to the right, we can afford the 5 second time loss to the trial time, otherwise we'd have to turn much tighter to be able to get it. Many people ask for a spaceship parts speedrun, but it's not really a thing besides in the 100% run of GTA 5, since you have to do almost 2 hours worth of missions to unlock the spaceship parts for collection. We'll then again follow the checkpoint under the bridge, though technically the checkpoint is wide enough we could go above the bridge and still get it. We'll hit one more, then skip the rest. The bottom right is now showing the silver time instead of the gold time that we have gone over. We have to get close enough to these checkpoints for the game to register that we attempted them, but no closer than that to cut this big corner. I generally use the height markings on the minimap as a reference and put the edge of the checkpoint next to them. Each checkpoint adds 5 seconds to the trial time, and it ticks over to the best outcome being bronze, but that's all we need. I could probably skip one or two more checkpoints earlier and still have time to spare, just not sure which ones yet. That completes this trial, and as soon as it pops me back into the menu, I'll select the next trial which takes me down to the beach and Chumash area of the city. This is where the payoff of the stunt plane trial strategy really starts, to get around the map so quickly. We'll first fly left to grab this pedestrian bridge over the coastal highway, and again crash into a pole to reset back to the start again. I'd like to include my obligatory message now, if you are new to the channel off this video, or watch me through recommendations anyways, a subscription to my channel if you like this style of heavy commentary speedrun videos really helps me continue to make more content and not have to slave away in the coal mines. 
well, office job, but same difference some days. After that restart, I'll take a sharp right to avoid the first checkpoint. It's crucial to avoid this checkpoint. When you're in the stunt trial and miss the first one, you can fly around for no time limit and go almost one-fourth of the map distance before it fails you. Once you hit the first marker though, the counter starts giving you a time limit of just over two minutes or so, and a much smaller distance before it fails you. This begins the knife flight section of the run, which happens to be currently routed into one go. The original routing for this category had us do it at three different points between you in sections of bridges. The knife flights are simple enough. Fly at a 90 degree angle in either direction between the two buildings. The nice part is that only the player really needs to go between the buildings, not the whole plane. The chosen buildings seem a bit random, but that's on par with the randomness of the bridges. The first few are simple enough, but after number 4 we take a sharp U-turn to come back to these two big buildings. Then an S-curve is done to the next knife flight, a pair of banking buildings. These used to be really tough to get out of as there was a building directly in front of you when headed into there, but once I realized I could keep the plane very high just below the roof line, it got much easier. Headed into the main city, I'll keep the plane at a lowish height to keep a frame of reference with the ground, along with using the buildings as a guide, knowing which exactly to turn around to grab the five knife flights here. I'd like to say I used the roads on the minimap as a guide, but taking my eyes off the plane proved explosive the time I tried it. Highways, the building on the right of number 10 is the lowest, and therefore the highest I can go. While holding this long angle, I just keep the rudder, right button on my controller, fully pulling me into the air. It keeps me in a slow fall during this loop that ends between the FIB and IAA buildings. Then we'll head to Vinewood for the toughest chain of knife flights. This move requires racing lines, basically. To come in wide for the first small opening, then turn in late for the second one, so I can head straight out of it and avoid the Chinese theater, and turn left to head to the final two knife flights. I find flying in this game rather smooth and satisfying, and while it's nowhere near super difficult, it's nice to have a speedrun category that pushes flying skills basically as far as they go, besides doing crazy stunting and trick maneuvers. The final two knife flights should be in an area familiar to most GT Online players. We'll simply go between the two smaller buildings, then widen our loop and come back passing by Eclipse Towers. After the confirmation we've completed all knife flights, I'll dive into the ground to reset us back to the start of the trial. We'll now complete this trial as well, even though there are no bridges on it, as we need to get to the next trial that will let us complete the run. We'll skip quite a few checkpoints but not going out of our way to get to them, minimizing the real time this trial takes, even though we only score a measly bronze. I'm going to fast forward this trial, as it's a rather dull part and I don't want to fill my videos with filler voiceover. The only thing to note is at the end of the trial, you have to dip down to get close to the second to last checkpoint even though we still go high to miss it. These categories do exist for fun, but also usually come about as a way to avoid burnout on the main categories, or something to do when a run dies on the long 6 hour class percent or 10 hour 100% runs of the main game, when the streamer doesn't have enough time to try another full run. We'll now select the third time trial, which puts us above the oil fields east of the city. I'll dive left and use the red buoy as a visual marker on, on how far I need to go to again avoid the first checkpoint. We stay low in the water and fly under a ton of bridges in a row. Hitting a wave is again a worry, as you can keep flying usually but fail the bridge. The game is usually bugged here and won't display the bridge complete screen, however as you can see from my splitter, the game is still detecting them being passed, and in game you still hear the audio of the under the bridge pop up. Once I die and retry this trial, either on purpose or accident, it'll start working again. I apologize for the occasional stutters. That's from my old computer's poor encoding that I have since fixed. We go under the big bridge while pulling a U-turn and they come right back into the smaller river. Getting into the river, it's not necessary to go under the first pipe, but I actually prefer it now as it lets you get the plane level early instead of having to dive down late like I do here. Getting through this section is easy enough, just stay low and make sure to bank the plane. Using rudder only for the big turn at the end won't be enough, so don't rely on it. This crosses off 7 bridges in quick succession, and I crash the plane at the end to again reset to the beginning of the trial. I should probably find a more consistent way to fail at the end here, this was a bit lucky it blew me up so fast. While resetting you may notice the time of day changes. About 8 hours in game pass whenever you die, but it doesn't really affect this run. As you can see me getting quite excited on the camera just then, we're on to the final and hardest part of the run, I call the Kessel Run after its Star Wars namesake, doing 10 bridges in a row. I again miss the first checkpoint to avoid the timer, and use the white water tower as a marker for where I want to be to get to the first bridge. 
These first few bridges are simple enough to stay flat and use the rudder to control myself. I'm sure we've all done them in GTA plenty of times. I'm always a nervous wreck when on a good speedrun though, so consider that into my excitement and timidness of this section. We stay left at the fork as none of the bridges to the right count as the bridges we need to pass under. Technically I do not have to cross under the reddish orange pipes coming up, but I find it easiest to do so to set up for the next few bridges. I then keep the plane slightly banked but headed straight to give plenty of space on either side of the wings. Now I've only got 5 bridges left, and they should in theory be pretty easy. Should. Head low onto the highway to grab the two bridges that come from the city, then I'll do a large U-turn to grab one more before heading up north a bit. There is a faster line I've found between these upcoming three, but it's pretty risky and I run right into a light pull over half the time I try it, only to save 4-5 to five seconds. Also, Gran Turismo fans, please don't hurt me for using your song. I never got to play your game as a kid, so I'm using the music as much as I can to relive a childhood I didn't have. The next bridge can be a pain as there are a ton of trucks and light poles to play spoiler. As well, be careful when turning right out of here, as the power line poles can sometimes pop in late if you have low graphics settings and you'll fly right into them. I know this category isn't the most impressive to watch, but it's still quite fun and I enjoy making this style of video. It's a very satisfying speedrun to do, and I hope you will consider doing a run of it yourself. And with that, we approach the simple final bridge up near the news headquarters yes. to finish the run. Yes? Yes? Yes! Wow! Already a sub-27! Yes! My time as of now is 26 minutes and 56 seconds, and I bet with current routing being optimized I can get another 20 seconds off that, but not much more. That's all the flying bits of the close shave category in GTA 5. I'll now show you what the first 8 minutes before we start flying looks like. Sadly, we have to play through the prologue to get into the main part of the game. We'll start at the very beginning of the game, on the 9 years ago text. Once we gain control of the character, we'll take cover into the wall, next to the door, instead of just running to it. To scare the guards into the back room, we aim at the white shirt's elbow, the blue shirt's leg, then anywhere on the brown jacket guard. This gets them all moving as soon as possible in the order they need to be going into the room. As Trevor comes in back now, be spamming up and enter, or up and A, or select up on console, in order to instantly call the phone to detonate. Once moving is Michael again, run through the doors then start jumping, turning sharply on the corners. And don't get too close to the rubble pile, you should do 5 jumps as you approach the money. It's always faster to run and jump on interiors, including as we exit this vault. Once available, switch to Trevor, then a uh, miss. Yeah, Michael dies. Just shoot anywhere but the guard. This is a strat called mission skipping, where if you fail a part of a mission 3 times, it lets you skip after the third time to the next checkpoint. It's pretty lame for true speedruns, but since this is a speedrun only focused on the flying aspect, it's allowed to use mission skips so that we can get to the flying faster. In the main categories of this game, we don't allow mission skipping, so don't think it's the norm. Spam the shoot button to shoot right away, but then also spam press the retry button. Similar to the respawn faster mechanic in GT Online, you can also restart the mission faster in single player by spamming the button, even though there was no visual indication of that. In this section, turn around right away and run jump back into the bank, which abandons Michael and Brad as fast as possible. After this, you'll skip to the next cutscene in the car. Be careful not to spam the retry button too much on the third fail, or you might have to fail a fourth time. The drive in the car is done as normal. There is no quick way to fail three times. Stay on the sides of the road in order to not get slowed down extra by snow. Once you gain control of Trevor after Brad and Michael are downed, then just run away from the fight as we don't have any need to defend our friends. The rest of the annoyingly unskippable prologue cutscene will play out, and then you can do the start of Franklin Lamar. The fast forward part of this drive is already covered in my Casual vs. Speedrun series to save time. Once getting to the end of the movie lot though, take this left turn but use your power to carry more speed, and the same with the next two turns into the Vespucci canals. We need a bit more distance from Lamar here compared to the normal run. Turn right into this house under construction, then head up the stairs. There are world spawn C4 here we can use to kill ourselves with. Once Lamar is in the intersection after coming down the hill, blow yourself up. You will respawn at this checkpoint still with the C4, and can exploit yourself a few more times to continue the mission skipping. 
We'll just mission skip the rest of this mission to where you saw me start the run with the taxi to the airfield. It kinda sucks it's like that, but that's how the game is, my man. If you mess up the C-Force strat, you can just turn around and drive away from Lamar to fail that section. Then with the police, just get out of the car and surrender three times. Then once in Simeon's dealership, just get into Franklin's car and drive back to his house. If you don't want to even attempt the C4 route, you can also kick the red car four times to fail at the start of Franklin MR. It loses you only like 20 seconds over a perfect C4 route. That's been a full walkthrough, guide, tutorial, mentorship, and manual on the close shave, aka under the bridge category in GTA 5. I hope you enjoyed watching my little side video, and have no fear, Casual vs. Speedrun returns next. I just want to branch out to the occasional other video to help give my channel some variety. Thanks for watching, and see you later.